Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a pleasure to be here on behalf of the Garfield VTE Registry Group. And I'm going to drill down on the patients with cancer-associated thrombosis. These are my disclosures, and I'll give you a moment to look at them. So we know overall that the burden of VTE is enormous. And of this burden, about 20% of VTE cases are associated with active cancer or with a history of cancer. And in cancer patients, VTE is the second leading cause of death. And when VTE occurs in cancer patients, it increases hospitalization, it can delay cancer treatment, and it definitely increases health care costs. So we need to learn more about it, to do better at preventing VTE in our cancer patients, and to do better at treating it when it occurs. The aims of this analysis was to compare the clinical characteristics of patients with a confirmed diagnosis of VTE in patients with active cancer, a history of cancer, or no cancer. And Sylvia has given us the overall anticoagulant treatment patterns, but now we want to drill down into differences in treatment patterns among patients with active cancer, history of cancer, and no cancer. And I'm starting the clock after the diagnosis of, can of VTE has been made in our patients. So we've seen this flow chart, and of that 10,677 patients with objectively confirmed VTE, 981, 9.2% had active cancer, 662, 6.2% had a history of cancer, and the remaining 934 patients, or 85%, had no cancer. Now let's look at the baseline characteristics in these three groups. You see a similar dis distribution of men and women. The age, uh, the median age uh, of patients with active cancer or history of cancer is a little older than it is in those with no cancer. Interestingly, the patients with active cancer, a lower percentage had a history of prior VTE. And the distribution of DVT versus PE in the cancer, active cancer group is very similar to that in the patients with a history of cancer or with no cancer. So about 60% have DVT and the remaining patients have PE with or without accompanying DVT. Now what about the patients with pulmonary embolism? We're always worried about our PE patients because the case fatality rate in patients with PE is about twice that uh, in patients with DVT. And 90% of the patients with uh, PE, whether they had active cancer, history of cancer, or no cancer, had involvement of segmental or more proximal pulmonary arteries. So we're talking about what we consider bona fide uh, PE and somewhere between uh, 8 and 10 percent have subsegmental uh, PE and we can argue about the clinical significance of that. But it's similar across the three groups in the active cancer group, history of cancer, and no cancer group. Now here's the regional variation in the proportion of VTE patients with active cancer, history of cancer, and no cancer. We do so see some geographical variation, but you see the, see the same trend across countries. 
What are the five most common sites of cancer in our VTE patients? Uh, in men, the top two are lung and prostate. In women, the top two are gynecological and breast. So in the total uh, Garfield VTE uh, population of the cancer patients, lung is number one and gynecologic is second. If we look at the Global CAN reference group, and remember this registry, this information comes from about 280 countries across the world, but it's locked in uh, at, uh, in about 2012. In men, the top two were lung and prostate. We had lung and prostate here. In women, it was breast and colorectal. Well, breast was second in the Garfield VTE, colorectal was fifth, and overall it was breast and prostate, and those are also in the top in our group. Interestingly, in Garfield VTE, we're seeing in the top five lymphoma in both men and women, and it's the fifth most common site overall. And that's interesting because I think in the last few years as we come, become much more aggressive in our treatment of lymphoma, we are seeing more VTE with hematological malignancies and not just with solid tumors. What was the anticoagulation pattern over the first 30 days after diagnosis? And not surprisingly, you see that in the active cancer group, there's a preponderance of use of parenteral anticoagulation, and not so much in the history of cancer or the no cancer group. And in the active uh, cancer group, we do see uh, the use of uh, DOAX only in some patients, 12.5% uh, and a parenteral plus DOAX. So overall, in about 20% uh, of our patients with cancer, the DOAX are coming into play as initial therapy. So in conclusion, from this cancer analysis, the most common sites of cancer associated with thrombosis in the Garfield VTE registry to date, lung in men, gynecological in women, so lung and gynecological overall. Patients with active cancer are more likely to receive parenteral anticoagulants and less likely to receive DOAX or vitamin K antagonists than patients with a history of cancer or without cancer. But the DOACs are being used either to start with or after a bridge with parenteral anticoagulation, about 25% of patients. I think as we see in this Congress, there are more and more studies in uh, looking at the DOACs in cancer patients, and I see over time we'll see changes. But right now, already, DOACs are being used in the cancer patients. And I'll stop there, and we'll answer questions uh, at the end of the symposium.